One, two, three, four. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be telling you everything that you need to know about Skate the Infinity, the skateboarding sports anime. Skate the Infinity is an original anime. There is now a manga adaptation of the television series that was released on Book Live on March 5th, 2021. But the show is a completely original anime by Bone Studio. There is also a spin-off called Skate Chill Out, published by Young Ace Up, which is a manga spin-off of the anime series. A BL, Boys Love, legend, is at the head of the project. Hiroko Utsumi, who has directed two very popular BL series, Banana Fish from Studio Mappa and Free at Kyoto Animation, is the person that is directing this series. Skate the Infinity isn't located in Tokyo, it's actually located in Okinawa, which has been called the Hawaii of Japan. Manga's mother is also from Okinawa, which is why he moved from Canada back there after the death of his father. There is also a skate park in Okinawa that looks almost identical to the skate park shown in the series. Ichiro Okuchi is also the writer for the series. He is well known for the Code Gear series. Langa speaks English occasionally throughout the show due to the fact that he grew up in Canada. This creates some funny moments but also some meaningful ones as well. He is also not used to all the Japanese customs due to this, such as not being used to sitting in Seiza style and having Reki correct the way he bows. His writing also has a couple of issues in the Japanese language because he is so used to writing in English. Tasuku Hatanaka, the voice actor for Reki, has dubbed some huge movies. Hatanaka, at the age of 11, dubbed the character Edmund in the popular film series The Chronicles of Narnia for Japanese audiences. Hatanaka has also dubbed Mickey Milkovich in Shameless. Thomas in The Maze Runner, and Flash Thompson in the recent Spider-Man film series. He's also done a variety of anime work from Yu-Gi-Oh! to Domestic Girlfriend, but I personally find his dubbing history pretty interesting. Speaking of dubbing, Kenta Miyaki, who plays Shadow, is the voice actor for Thor in the Japanese dubs. From the Thor films to every Avenger sequel, Miyaki is the Japanese voice for this well-known character. If you also remember The Adventures of Bill and Mandy, he is also the Japanese voice of Grimm. This is not to overshadow the insane amount of anime work he has done over his 22 years as a voice actor, with titles like Naruto, Pokemon, Bleach, Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood, and even Banana Fish under his belt. Cherry Blossom, one of my personal favourites on the show, is voiced by Hikaru Midori Kawa, who also voices the one, the only, Seto Kaiba in Yu-Gi-Oh! The actor for Joe, Yasunori Matsumoto, is also a familiar voice in the Japanese dubbing world, with Matsumoto being the dub for Adam Sandler in five different films for Japanese audiences. We know that all these voice actors are well known for their dubs, but even Tadashi's voice actor, Kensho Ono, has had to dub incredibly popular roles. He is the Japanese dub actor for Daniel Radcliffe, voicing Harry Potter in the full Harry Potter series for Japan, and other popular roles by Radcliffe, from Kill Your Darlings to Horns and Swiss Army Man. Skate the Infinity tributes Banana Fish in an iconic frame. With Utsumi directing Skate the Infinity, we were bound to see some sort of nudge towards older works by Utsumi. Here we see the lovely shot of Ash, the main character in Banana Fish. We see a shocked face before a glimpse at his eye where we see Edgy, the secondary character, reflected. This similar shot is beautifully showcased in Skate the Infinity, where Reki is watching Langa skateboard. This is also a trope that can be seen in Free, 
where Rin looks at Haru. Utsumi is a queen at reflective anime eyes. Skate also references the popular work Sailor Moon in episode 2, as Shadow does a transformation sequence in a similar style. Skate the Infinity uniquely uses the 2D visuals of anime and 3D effects in order to create the skateboarding scenes with a lot more velocity. It makes the animation hard to look away from when amazing moments happen. Biblical References Skate definitely uses biblical references with the terms Adam and Eve within the story. Adam or Anusuke clearly thinks of himself as Adam from the Bible and he's looking for his Eve. Someone who will take a bite of the apple with him, the apple being skateboarding, especially in the way that Anusuke likes to skate. He believes that Langa could be the Eve for him and tries his best to get closer to Langa, while continuously stating that this is all out of love. The story actually flips these roles. Whilst Anusuke thinks he is looking for his Eve, he is really the Eve out of the two, and Langa can be seen more as Adam in the biblical story. Sorry if this gets confusing. Anusuke is the one who is tempting Langa with a dangerous form of skating, making Adam the Eve of the situation. Adding to the biblical references, the skate park is the Garden of Eden, and Tadashi is also added to this metaphor, as he enters the competition as Snake. The snake in the Bible is the one who tells Eve to take a bite of the apple, which parallels with Tadashi, who was the one who taught Anusuke how to skate. There are so many more things I could say about the biblical references in Skate the Infinity, but that would take a whole other video where I do an analytical review on the show. If you'd like to see me do that, please let me know below. Reki and Langa have a meet cute, like a classic romantic comedy. We see that Langa is introduced to the class when he first arrives at school, but Reki and Langa aren't exactly introduced to each other so much. When Langa is outside of Cherry's work, that's when he bumps into Reki. A meet cute usually involves two people meeting outside of the place they would usually be. They bump into each other. Langa notices that Reki's skateboard is rolling down the hill, and that's how they start their meet cute before Reki jumps over Langa using his skateboard, leaving Langa in a little bit of awe. The character Mia, who is a skateboarding prodigy, was heavily inspired by the skateboarder Rodney Mullen who went pro at 14. He invented staple skateboarding tricks such as the ground ollie, kickflip, impossible, and heel flip. These are all moves Mia uses in the anime. For April Fool's Day, Anilist changed their thumbnail picture of Skate the Infinity to the PlayStation 2 game Tony Hawk's Pro Skate 2, changing the skate to skate with an 8. A cafe for the show was announced before the end of the show in collaboration with Anime Cafe. The cafe items are absolutely adorable, but they were only available for a limited time. There is also a new collaboration with Loft in Japan for a mini store. They've titled the store Dope Sketch, like the store Reki and Manga work in in the anime series. The theme song, Paradise, is done by Rude Alpha. He is a 24-year-old Japanese rapper who also does the ending song, Life, for the anime, Dr. Stone. Skate the Infinity is often referred to as Project Skate. If you go on Skate the Infinity's website, you will see Project Skate at the bottom or in any of their collaborations with Loft or Animate. This is a nod to Banana Fish, which was consistently referred to as Project Banana Fish. Even within the anime series itself, Skate the Infinity's dub has earned a large following and has even gone viral with Adam's words, including What is it that you require to turn a meal into a mouthgasm? I come bearing exciting news. We'll finally know who the real top is. Daddy knows you can handle it. Hey, bitches!
prison bros and non-binary hoes. There are a whole heap of fun one-liners in the dub, which genuinely makes it entertaining. Surprising, I know. Well, I guess that's it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed all the facts that I had to share with you about the series. Let me know if there's anything that you would like to share with everybody else down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.